All right, we're rolling. Okay. Well, welcome to the McLaughlin House. We're going to spend some time today talking about the man called Dr. John McLaughlin, the father of Oregon and the founder of Oregon City. Well, let's take you, why was Eve McLaughlin here? 1600, the Hudson's Bay Company formed in England. It was a charter company. Charter, you know, means it. He can claim land on behalf of the government. To have King England, like Charles, claim this land. Well, that's what McLaughlin could have done in Hudson's Bay Company. In England, actually in Europe in those days, women of son of fashion wore around their necks furs. Ermine, mink, fox, bobcat, just to name a few. And the men, the famous top hats. More important, they were the taller and the thicker that hat was. They didn't go to a place called Macy's to buy the furs or, or Target. They got their furs through the tailors that made the men's clothes. Tailors bought them in fur auctions. They were put on by the Hudson's Bay Company. So the Hudson's Bay Company for years supplied the furs that the ladies and men wore as part of their fashion statement. They ran out of furs in Europe to trap. Hudson's Bay came, Company came over early 1800, claimed all the land from what we now call Montreal all the way across the breadth of the continent for their land. They came out to the Northwest John Jacob Astor, 1811, when he established Fort Astoria out here, came British later on. Fort Vancouver came in, or Hudson Bay coming said that's not big enough for us, came inland. In 1824, they built Fort Vancouver. Fort Vancouver is just across the water, 30 miles from where we are today. Dr. John McLaughlin was made chief factor, head man, CEO of the company there. Now, McLaughlin, first of all, I want to talk about you and I. In those times, you and I were about five foot seven, about 130 pounds. McLaughlin was six foot four, 150 or 250, 275 pounds. A giant man, flowing white hair, sharp eyes. In fact, the Indians called him the great white-headed eagle because of the piercing look his blue eyes could look at you. McLaughlin not only built Fort Vancouver, 1824. But he claimed, lay claimed all the land on behalf of the British government from what's known as Sitka to San Francisco, Boise to Honolulu, Hawaii. For the land, for the furs, and for their natural resources. Now he established over 20 posts. If you were a fur trapper working for Dr. McLaughlin, he would assign you to one of those posts where you and your family and about 40 other families called Brigade would spend the winter while you were trapping. Incidentally, the men trapped. The women did the skinning. So when you brought your furs back to Fort Vancouver, once a year, usually late spring, early summer, when you went into Fort, you took your furs in the fur warehouse. And you men turned in maybe 250 pounds of pelts per year, if you had a good year, each one of you. And the clerk there evaluated what you bring in, the kind of fur, how many fur you had, and the condition of furs. If your wife did not do a good job of skinning that animal, cleaning it, you might not, they might throw that animal away, you not get paid for that particular pelt. And you might lose maybe 30, 40, 50 pounds of pelts if your wife did a lousy job. Then you'd have to retrain her. 